Hi, my name is Michael R. Bittman. Six years ago, I lost my vision after contracting an eye infection. Then I came across this project at FIU. It's a pair of glasses that's going to grant me my freedom back. Break round cranes bands. Bow and jump when courting a mate. This is absolutely fantastic. It's been the only piece of technology I've been able to use that will allow me to read a story to my daughter. So last year, I was a student here at FIU. I was selecting my last classes for one of my last semesters. But little did I know that one of those classes had the potential to not only change my life, but change the life of millions of people around the world. Now, I'm not a nuclear engineer or a brain surgeon. I'm a marketing person. I went for advertising uh, in FIU. Uh, but I learned about social entrepreneurship last year, and I really wanted to learn more about it. So for those who haven't heard the term before, social entrepreneurship stands for a business with two main goals, profit and social impact. And social impact being a really big part of it. So anyway, I started taking this class, and one day the professor comes in and says, you guys, there's this great opportunity to participate in a global social entrepreneurship competition in Seattle. And I was like, yeah, that sounds right. You know, sounds good. I may do it. And then she continued, and for those who qualify, the school will pay for all your expenses to go to Seattle. And that's when I say, that's it, sign me up. I'm all over that competition, I'm ready. And I really had no idea what I was getting into. It was a lot of work, and at one point I was like going crazy, this is not cool, it's a lot of work, I cannot handle it. But it all ended up really well. So we had a bigger group at the beginning, and then I ended up in a group with three engineers and I, which was great. But at that point, we didn't have a an idea to participate. So we started brainstorming, and it wasn't really working. So there were two main reasons why the idea had to be very good. Number one, we're going to be competing with some of the best universities around the world, just MIT and Stanford from the US. And reason number two, my trip to Seattle depended on this. So I was serious, right? It had to be something really, really good. But after a while, we realized, you know what, we need to think out of the box. Let's start asking friends and family what they think. And I thought, I have a friend that's a social entrepreneur. Let's bring him in, see if we can, we can think about something new. And so I invited my friend, Mike Arvidman. But let me tell you what else is special about Mike. I met Mike a couple of years ago. And just before then, he was on his way to conquering the world of computers and programming. He's, he's a genius. So he graduated from a PhD with a 4.0 GPA. Uh, he had been recently married at that point. He was working for a very large software corporation. And in fact, he was so good that he was especially selected to work in Asia. But, but at the time that he was there, he contracted an eye infection by, sleep on, by sleeping on a pillow that wasn't properly cleaned. But no big deal. You know, every, everybody's had a pink eye before, so nothing to worry too much about. So he came back to the US. But he noticed that his eyes were hurting. So he, got, he went to the doctor. And the doctor said, Mike, don't worry. Take these drops. You'll be fine. So he goes home, and he just do that. But then, a couple of weeks later, he wakes up one morning, and he cannot see. He goes back to the doctors. And the doctor says, Mike, we performed some additional tests. And what he got was a rare type of pink eye that had attacked and destroyed his retinas. He became blind that day, overnight. So when we met with Mike, he told us his story and all the struggles he went through trying to you know, cope with the fact that he became blind, he lost his job, he couldn't be independent anymore. And we realized there's something here, right? But there's some, something else that's very special. The three engineers, they had been part of a NASA-sponsored project that involved drones and text recognition. So these drones will fly over the ground and recognize text targets with letters on them. So the, the drone will fly and come back with results like, OK, I found letter A, letter B, letter C. And then sometimes it will pick up some random stuff, like a gas station sign or a store sign. And that's where it hit us. We can actually get this drone technology, put it on a pair of glasses, 
translate the text into audio, and help people like Mike read printed text. Just like Mike, there are 285 visually impaired, a million visually impaired individuals in the world. That's when iTalker was born. And ever since, it's been an amazing ride. We've gotten a lot of attention from the press, from the blind community. We get people from all over the world sending us emails saying their stories, but also telling us how this product will change their lives. And why is it so important to them? Because 90% of blind people are unemployed, and they live one-third less than sighted people. So what these glasses give them is access, easier access to education, which leads to employment, which leads to better healthcare, and therefore a better quality of life. So what I would like to do today is give you a demo of the product that we have so far. And for that, I have two very special guests, guests with me tonight. One is uh, Jesus Amundarain. He's one of the lead engineers in the project oh, and yeah. my friend and inspiration for iTalker, Michael Arvidman. Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesus Amundarain, and I am the lead engineer of the iTalker project. And um, basically, the first thing that we came across, we decided to make this amazing idea. And we were all excited about it. But then we said to ourselves, well, let's, let's find out if we can actually do this thing. Mm -hmm. So we start looking around, and we see the technology that is out there and everything that is out. And immediately, we realized that in order to be successful, we had to be able to leverage existing technology out there that had already been basically transformed. Everything right now is much faster. Is smaller, is more powerful, and is a lot cheaper than what it used to be a few months ago. So this was so important to us because we knew that if we had to reinvent the wheel and do everything completely from scratch, this project would take so much longer to actually come to reality. So once we understood this, we started doing research, we looked, and this is what we have today. We were able to come up with a prototype and have a product that can actually work the way we want it, and we were able to do it at a low cost, and we are ready to start developing and adding more functionality. So, Mike, why don't you please read to the audience and everybody who's listening to us yep. the sign that we have. So we have printed Great. this so you guys can see it, and Mike's going to read this in a few moments. So I don't know if you can see that on in the audience. Good. Here you All go. Right, thank you. So right now I'm holding a speaker here. Normally, the user would just have an earpiece that he would just put on his ear, but this is just so that you guys, okay. everyone that's listening to us, can actually hear the iTalker work. And I'm holding this remote. This is the way that we actually actuate the component. We activate it so that it starts reading. So I'll do that for Mike right now. Be the change that you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. You know, when I first lost my vision, I realized that there were a few things I'd have to learn how to do again without being able to see. Navigate a computer, pour a glass of soda, uh, walk around the house, Unfortunately, or I guess unfortunately, washing my hair was not one of them. <laughs> um, the one thing I thought I would not be able to do again, though, is read. And thanks to these glasses, I was able to read a bedtime story to my two-year-old daughter for the first time. When I did, I gave her a kiss, laid her down in the crib, and she said, thank you, Daddy, I love you. <laughs> and I can't explain to you how great that felt for me. So thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. 